plaintiff, Joetta Thomas, says the defendant is her daughter, and she was a good child. However, Joetta claims four years ago, after a surgery, the defendant became addicted to pain pills, and she has since graduated to heroin and meth. Joetta is desperate to get her daughter some help, and she's suing her for loans, breach of contract, and emotional distress. Defendant Latasha Burdett admits that she became addicted to pain pills after the doctors had her on pain medication for an entire year after her surgery. Latasha believes her mother is suing for more than she owes. Start with you. Yes, uh, this is my daughter, Latasha Bernadette. She, as you can see, she's beautiful, vibrant, and I, I love her so much more than life itself. And I'm here today because of her. A few years ago, 2012. How was she as a, a youngster? As a youngster, she was an excellent student. Yeah. She, uh, she attended band. She was uh, well known in school. And when they had the football games, my son played on the football team. Natasha came out playing the drums. She was fluent in music. She can read sheet music. She played three different instruments. She's very intelligent. <clears throat> and uh, in 2012, Your Honor, mm -hmm. my daughter, she had surgery and she was prescribed pain medication. And you know what you're going to tell it's me about now. awareness, Your Honor. This is bigger than the loan. This is about awareness for the world that when you take pain medication, you have to be careful, you can become addicted to it. And then when the, the doctor cut off the pain medication, she would go on the streets and buy them. Yeah. And she used uh, her, her rent money. She used money for her, her husband would give Did her for the car she heroin payment. after that? <laughs> Your Honor, yes! Just two months ago, yes. <laughs> and also, she, she tried ice, meth. <laughs> Plaintiff Joetta Thomas says the defendant is her daughter and Joetta is desperate to get her some help because she's addicted to drugs and two months ago started using heroin and meth. Is any of this true, young lady? Um, some of it. Some of it's true. What part? Well, in 2012, I had a surgery. And when I had my surgery, um, the doctors prescribed me pain medication for, for so long. And then out of nowhere, they cut me off. When they cut me so off. So long was how long? Um, for about a year, a year. What type of uh, a surgery did you have? I had a um, cyst removal. And um, they had me on it for so long, and they just cut me off out of nowhere. What led them to prescribe you for a full year? Um, pain pills. Consistently telling them surgery. I'm, Pardon? Consistently telling them I'm in pain. I was in pain. I've been Were after you? I, yeah, after I had the surgery, uh -huh. I still had issues. And after the surgery, it was worse. Did you go to pain management? No. Okay, and it was worse, and you told the doctor it was worse afterwards? Yes. And it, all they did is give you med uh, pain medication? She never told you that? No. She never told you, Mama, uh, this pain from the surgery has continued? I recall a few times where she came to me and said that she wanted to talk to me, mm -hmm. and then she would start. And then she'd say, no, that's okay, because I know how you are. You're going to go how off. How long after the surgery? That was maybe um, six months to a year after. Okay. This happened in 2012. Do you think she was coming to you to say she was uh, having uh, uh, a substance abuse problem, or that she was addicted yeah, to a pain pill? I believe that's what she was saying, because she did it several times. Okay. And then I talked to her and said, you know, I don't like you coming to me, starting something, and leave my man wondering. Uh -huh. I told her I didn't like that, but she would never tell me. When did I, you find out? I found out November the 14th, 2014, when we, when we signed for our new home. What did she say? She told me that she's been addicted to pain medication. And that and she was... has a problem. She admitted okay. it. And then a week later, we got her in rehab. Okay. And then after we got her in rehab, she stayed for maybe a little over a week. Okay. Then she was saying that she wanted to come home, and I How said no. How many times has she gone to rehab? Three to four times. All right. Is that true, ma'am? You've uh, been to rehab three or four times? Yes. This is an uh, uh, epidemic around the country, and that is the that people have surgery. And uh, from my understanding, I've had surgery a couple of times, and they tell me uh, the maximum we can give you is 14 days. Mm -hmm. After that, you have to come to some type of pain management, you have to come to some type of therapy, or we adjust it to something else. But uh, I'm glad to hear you. I've tried to get rehabilitation. That's what... I like to hear in this epidemic, um, have you graduated to heroin? It was occasionally. 
Pardon me? Occasionally. Okay. Like when I couldn't find any pills. Okay. And mama, why are you suing her about these loans? Oh, well, because, because of her addiction, she couldn't keep a job long enough, but um, Latasha always had good paying jobs. She was a lead supervisor. She worked for the airport. She's had excellent jobs. So when I gave Tasha four loans, she, um, she reneged on them. And then also... Over the course of how long? Uh, the loans were, uh, uh, 2013. You have a list there? I can yes, know. I have a list. And her breach of contract and emotional distress. Emotional distress for her drug problem? No, emotional distress because Latasha had told me that she was pregnant. And, um, uh, I don't know anything about my grandchild. <laughs> And um, it's like when you have a, a, a baby in the hospital, there, there's a proper memorial that you have to have. And you get footprints and stuff, and I didn't get anything with the box in it, and you name the baby. You just don't leave the baby okay. at the hospital right. like it's a dog. Unfortunately, people who live destructive lives and it affects others, that's typically the case. The people it affects can't get emotional distress uh, from the person who's living that destructive life and affecting them because then you'd have a line of people around the courthouse in every city saying, uh, my drug addicted or my alcohol addicted relative or father, or mother, or cousin, or son, or friend, or girlfriend. They're on drugs, and it makes me sad because they come and take the TV every day. You can sue for the TV. <laughs> you can't sue for the emotional stress of the TV being taken. You, can, uh, you, can't, you can't sue when they come in nodding. Yeah, that's terrible. That's something horrible to experience. I would hate to see that. And um, you can't sue for that. Um, but it's um, uh, part of a family being devastated uh, with a drug addicted family member. And so can't grant you emotional distress, but we can talk about the loans. Plaintiff Joetta Thomas says the defendant is her daughter, and Joetta is desperate to get her some help because she's addicted to drugs and two months ago started using heroin and meth. Two in July of 13 and two in August of 13. Two, over the course of two months, you gave her loans totaling over $2,000? Yes, because she said that she was pregnant, but Your Honor, she wasn't pregnant. But what pregnant. did she need it for? I mean, did I didn't want her to be, the hospital, I, I'm sure you did No, didn't. I didn't want her to be homeless on the street, so she okay. said that it was for rent and eviction. Got it. All right, young lady. Well, the, the loans were the money. I would tell her a problem that was going on, and she would, you know, offer to help. I and never came to her and was like, oh, I need this for this, or I need this for that. It's always me, you know, coming towards a mother, telling her what's going on, and she's like, well, here, take this. You and your husband take it. And it wasn't just me. It was me and my husband that took, you know, the funds. I don't think it adds up to that much, but it was... Did you ever agree to repay it? After a while, honestly, yeah, I did. I, I, I you know, agreed to pay, repay it because she kept texting me and bugging me and hounding me about it. And I'm just like, look, Mom, when I get my stuff together, I promise I'm going to give it back to you. I'm trying, you know, and it just never got to that point. All right. A couple of things. One, ma'am, it does sound reasonable that you would give it to her just out of hearing the need that she has. You just told me about all the concern you had for her pregnancy and not wanting to see her suffer during that time. So it does sound like something. Uh, look like my mom had my rent. Uh, we're going to get put out or such and such and such. Well, here, baby, take it for the, it, the next month, same thing. However, you have admitted and I admire you for doing it. However, it came about. And I ain't trying to be funny, but maybe you might have been high one day you said it. <laughs> and and so, uh, so she she stuck to it. <laughs> and then the next time when you were sober, you said, okay, all right, leave me alone. If I said it, I'll pay you. Like you're out of day, you're sober. So the day you said, okay, just I'll pay her. Because I did say it one time when I was sober. The first time I think I was high. <laughs> 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 Can we get you some help, some inpatient or outpatient help? I think you need inpatient help. Will you go to inpatient as soon as we're able to find you a place? You must have to find you a place. <laughs> yeah.
just keep, keep doing it. Keep doing it. I've known people that have gone six or seven times, and finally it worked. Just keep going. And the other part is, people claim that they overcome it on my own. I didn't go nowhere. I didn't even go to rehab. I just overcame it on my own. <laughs> when I'm, you know, whatever. And then those who overcome it most, they follow up with those NA meetings every day. Every day. If you get a job, you go at night. Or you go in the morning at 7 a.m. and then you go in the evening at 8 p.m. when you get off. I know uh, uh, my closest friend in life, he had a probably 15-year uh, crack addiction. And when he was ready to come off, he went to rehab and came to me and said, can he work with me and help him advance himself? And ultimately, he became one of the top um, officials in the county. Um, he went to... In a twice a day for at least that first year. Then he may have backed up that second or third year and went once a day. And he went once a day for at least five years. And then he went once every other day at least for another five years. And then maybe once a week for another five. And he hasn't gone to an NA meeting now probably for 20 years. You can put the dope in front of him. And he won't use it. Put the door in front of the door. <laughs> Plaintiff Joetta Thomas says the defendant is her daughter, and Joetta is desperate to get her some help because she's addicted to drugs and two months ago started using heroin and meth. This is horrible what's happening with this. It got to come up with a, a different way to treat folks and to avoid addictions with this medicine. Good luck to you, all right? We're going to hook you up. All right, judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you. With the exception of the emotional distress. Have a good day. Fix myself and I'm gonna do a lot better. I promise. I'm not gonna hurt you anymore. I love you. <laughs>